Hi everyone, this lesson is on three important health consequences to look out for if you're taking statin medications. Before we talk about those three important health consequences, let's talk about what statins are and how they work. So statins are medications used to lower or reduce blood cholesterol levels. So some examples include atorvastatin, simvastatin, and rosuvastatin. So they work by inhibiting synthesis of cholesterol via inhibition of a particular enzyme known as HMG-CoA reductase. So these statin medications block that particular enzyme, prevent it from functioning, and that enzyme is involved in producing cholesterol. So statin medications are effective in lowering risk of cardiovascular disease by reducing cholesterol. So this is their primary function, to lower blood cholesterol levels and to ultimately lower risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, there are certain patient characteristics that can increase the risk of having side effects. Some of these include female biological sex, older age, medical conditions such as kidney disease, liver disease, and smaller body habitus, or simply being smaller or thinner. So if you were to give the same dose to someone that's smaller compared to someone that's larger, the smaller person will be exposed to a higher concentration of dose. So some of these patient characteristics will play a role in the health consequences we'll discuss in this lesson. So the first health consequence we're going to discuss is going to be rhabdomyolysis. Before we talk about rhabdomyolysis, though, we have to talk about myalgia. Myalgia is going to be muscle aches and pains. This is actually going to be a common side effect, and it's going to be the most common problematic side effect for patients on statins. And this will, will often lead to discontinuation of statins. So again, myalgias are going to be muscle aches and pains. In some cases, though, patients can get what we call myopathy, so disease of muscle, or rhabdomyolysis, which is severe muscle damage. So both of these can lead to damage to the muscle. Rhabdomyolysis is going to be more severe, though, in the sense that it's going to lead to a major breakdown of muscle. So this is where muscles essentially rupture, releasing myoglobin, and myoglobin is something that is contained in muscles, but it's not supposed to be outside of muscles. We'll talk about that here in a moment. So with myopathy and rhabdomyolysis, we can get increased creatine kinase. We're not going to see this with myalgia. Myalgia is not going to have the same pathophysiology. So when muscles break down, as in rhabdomyolysis, we're going to get an increase in creatine kinase. We'll also get a release of myoglobin, as I mentioned before, and myoglobin is going to be the analog of hemoglobin that is inside the muscle. It's not supposed to be outside of the muscle. If it does get outside of the muscle, it'll enter into the blood and travel to the kidneys where it can lead to kidney injury or damage. So this is going to be very important. Rhabdomyolysis, severe muscle damage or destruction leading to release of myoglobin, which can then lead to kidney injury. Now, why does this happen? So why it happens is due to the same mechanism we talked about before. Statins inhibit HMG-CoA reductase. This leads to reductions in cholesterol, but it also leads to reductions in something else. And that something else is coenzyme Q10. So coenzyme Q10 is very important for mitochondrial functioning, and mitochondrial functioning is very important for muscle health and functioning. So if you don't have enough coenzyme Q10, we get mitochondrial dysfunction, and then we end up having unhealthy, damaged, and in some cases, severely damaged muscles. So this is the reason why we can see this occurring in statin use. Now, what are some of the risk factors for getting rhabdomyolysis? Some of these include a higher dose of statins. So this is going to be a big risk factor for getting myopathy and rhabdomyolysis. We can also see it with certain drug interactions. We can see it in patients who are older, patients who have concurrent hypothyroidism or low functioning thyroid. We can also see it in patients who have a vitamin D deficiency. So this is very important. In some cases, patients can take vitamin D supplements if they're taking statins, and this can reduce the risk of having these particular health outcomes. And also, because this is related to reduced coenzyme Q10, taking coenzyme Q10 supplements can also help reduce the risk of some of these major complications occurring. So those are very important to point out. The next health consequence that statins can cause is liver disease. So we can get hepatitis with statin use. Hepatitis, itis refers to inflammation. Hepat refers to the liver, so it's liver inflammation. And what we're going to see is we're going to see elevated liver transaminases. This is what they're called. Liver transaminases are these enzymes that can be dumped out of the liver when the liver is inflamed. They are ALT and AST. So there's increased ALT and increased AST. So this is often the reason why some clinicians will test your liver transaminases after you've started a statin medication. Sometimes clinicians can wait to check these particular enzymes because they can often transiently elevate. So they can elevate and then they can go back to normal levels. So sometimes 
if you were to check your blood work and they're higher, you may think about discontinuing the statin, but actually it's only temporarily elevated, so you can just wait it out. So that's important. Sometimes clinicians will check it if patients have signs and symptoms of hepatitis, including right upper quadrant pain. So pain in the upper right of your abdomen. In the case, though, where there is true hepatitis due to statins, and you were to continue use, this can lead to liver damage, although this is going to be rare. So again, what's going to often happen is that most of the time and patients start statins, they're going to have no symptoms, but they will have a transiently elevated level of ALT and AST, and then these levels will come back to normal. The problem is that if patients have high ALT and AST, that is three times above the upper limit of normal, then we know that this is a true issue. And why does this happen? The reason that this happens is is that statins are metabolized by the liver. So in the statins becoming metabolized by the liver, the liver cells, due to that metabolism, will release some ALT and AST. And again, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have hepatitis or liver inflammation, but it just shows that there's some leakage of ALT and AST. However, again, if levels are three times above the upper limit of normal, for ALT and AST, then that indicates true hepatic inflammation. Now, what are some of the risk factors for getting this true hepatic inflammation? Some of them include pre-existing liver disease. So if you have some problem with your liver already, you're more likely to have true issues with statin metabolism and subsequent inflammation of the liver. If you're using alcohol heavily, if you have obesity or you're older as well, you're more at risk for this as well. So those are some of the risk factors for getting this true hepatic inflammation which can in very rare circumstances lead to liver damage if it's prolonged and if ALT and AST levels are especially again three times above the upper limit of normal. And the third important health consequence to look out for is increased risk of diabetes. So statins can increase blood glucose levels modestly, so very small increased amount. So it might not seem like it's a lot, but it does lead to a very small increased risk of type 2 diabetes. And most importantly, in those who are already prone to diabetes, so if they have prediabetes or if they're at risk for diabetes, so if they have a very strong family history, for instance. Now, why does this happen? It's theorized that the reason that statins can cause a slight increase in blood glucose levels is due to either a reduction or reduced ability of beta cells in the pancreas to create insulin or the statins themselves in Packed or interfere with glucose being taken up by GLUT4 receptors in muscle and fat cells, for instance. So those are some of the possibilities as to why this may be occurring. This particular risk is going to be most important in patients who are taking high dose statins or high potency statins like atorvastatin and rosuvastatin. And in those cases, you may want to lower the dose or change to another alternative. And it's also important to keep an eye on your blood sugars and do regular blood work. And even though this does lead to a very small increased risk of type 2 diabetes, oftentimes the small increased risk of type 2 diabetes is offset by the cardiovascular benefits of statins. So that's important to point out here as well. Please check out my full lesson on statin side effects and also what to avoid if you're taking statin medications. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And also consider joining as a member for members only content and early access to new videos. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.